Okay, 4.2, solving linear inequalities. We're looking at inequalities. We need to look at uh, something that we are used to. For example, if you see a question like this, what's your automatic instinct? Hopefully, you're thinking collect like terms. Treat that greater than symbol right here as an equal sign. The only rule to remember is that you try and avoid multiplying or dividing by a negative as much as possible. Because if you multiply or divide by a negative, this symbol has to flip itself. So literally, it's like taking this symbol, so let me backtrack for a second, and whenever you were to divide or multiply by a negative, it's like taking this symbol itself, so I'm just going to show you, I'm going to move them over here, make him, and I'm going to flip him around. So you can actually take this symbol and flip it around. And when you take this symbol and flip it around, what happens is that this symbol actually can do one of these. So you see, when you multiply or flip by a negative, the symbol flips itself around like this. So that's something we don't want to do or we want to avoid as much as possible. So we're going to move him back to where he belongs to continue this problem. So, if this was an equal sign, our natural instinct would to literally take this and move the symbol, um, move everything to one side. So we're going to move to the side where the x is positive, and we move the numbers to the other side. We solve for x, and we get that x is less than 5. So note the symbol, the way it's written. x is over here, so we read from the x. x is smaller than 5. So we need all the values we're drawing on a number line where x is less than 5. So let's do that. x being less than 5, we have to have it's minimum of 7 ticks. On those ticks, you write the numbers you're going to use. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. On the 5, we're going to put an open circle it's open because we don't include the 5, but we include the numbers really, really close to 5. And then we're going to move it so it's all the numbers less than 5. So that means the arrow goes in the less than direction so that the arrow goes beyond the number line and you draw an arrow symbol here. You must have the arrow symbol going beyond the number line to indicate that these are all the numbers less than 5. Five. All right. Next, let's look at example two. You're asked to solve the inequality show, and then show graphically your solution. So here's another inequality. All right. What are you going to do? You move so that the x is going to be positive. We try and do that as much as possible. It is the easier way to do it and we divide both sides by 4, and we get x is greater than or equal to 7.5. That 7 ticks, folks. 7.5 is between 7 and 8, right there. We put a solid circle at 7.5, and we draw the symbol, or the number line, greater than 7.5, so that it goes beyond the number line in the greater than direction. All right, let's try another one. Example number three. You're asked to solve the inequality that looks like this. Part two. Okay, so let's look at this. What is this? This is known as a double inequality. A double because there are inequalities on both sides. Your automatic instinct should be to expand this, and that's what I would recommend that you do. Expand it, and then collect the like terms. When you collect the like terms, you'll find out that you have 8x plus 20 is between 60 and 92. What do we do next? Hopefully, you're thinking, all right, we need to move this plus 20. Where do we move it? Do we move it here? Or do we move it here? Or do we move it to both sides? Hopefully, your answer is we move it to both sides. So, subtract 20 on both sides to get us these values. So this is saying 8x 
is between 40 and 72. We don't want 8x, folks. We want x. So what do we have to do? That's right. Divide both sides by 8. All of it by 8. Sorry, not just both sides, but everything by 8. So the values are going to be x is between 5 and 9. We draw the number line so that 5 and 9 show up. Minimum of 7 ticks, folks. So we need extra numbers on either side. We draw a solid circle on 5, solid circle on 9, and we want the numbers between 5 and 9 so that x is greater than or equal to 5, but x is also less than or equal to 9. So that means that we want these values, the ones in between. So between here and here are the numbers that are between 5 and 9, including 5 and 9. All right, let's move on to the next one. Example number th part B has this example here. So logically, you want to expand it, move the minus 8 over, so that means you're going to add 8 to each side, but now we have a negative. So this starts to change things. Remember what I said earlier about negative signs. They actually change the question because no longer is it going to be going to be like this the symbol has to change itself because we're divided by negative did you watch that that this symbol right here has to change to be this and then because of this symbol here when we divide by negative 2 it has to change to that all right so what does that mean well this here, this form here, folks, is wrong. This is not in the proper order. You cannot say negative 4 is greater than or equal to x is greater than negative 7. That doesn't even make any sense logically, mathematically. So what we have to do is rewrite this. Negative 7 goes first. Now, negative 7 is less than x and is less than or equal to negative 4. So, that means that x is between negative 7 and negative 4, not including the negative 7, but including the negative 4. So we write out our number line, a minimum of 7 ticks, fill in the rest of the digits, and don't forget that we need to put an open circle on negative 7 because of that symbol, and because of this symbol we put a closed circle on negative 4. So we want the numbers between negative 7 and negative 4, connect the dots, and there you go, folks. That is the solution to this problem. Now, taking a question from page 215, number 19, we're going to look at the couple of more questions that would probably be helpful to you. For example, x squared is less than 4. What is this saying? Well, it's saying x is less than plus or minus 2. Wait a minute. How can you have a number less than two possible values? Well, this is important to note. We introduced, over here there was no negative. All of a sudden we introduced a negative. What does this mean? It means that, okay, let's go back, x squared minus, so x is less than 2 or x is greater than negative 2. This is what this is saying from here to here. Another way we could have looked at it is this way. x squared minus 4 is less than 0, moving the 4 over. And what you have to do is factor it. x minus 2 and x plus 2 are the factored versions of this. And if we look at it this way, this is saying x minus 2 is less than 0 and x plus 2 is less than 0. Well, there's something wrong with that. So let's look at the final problem. Let's graph x squared minus 4. Here's our x squared minus 4 graph. We know that the zeros are at 2 and negative 2. We need to know when the graph is less than 0. So that means, when we're looking at the graph, that all these values under here is less than 0. All these values here is under 0. That means that this here, right here in the box, is the correct way to understand this. What we have are two values where x is, uh, sorry, x is between negative 2 and 2 so that the values are less than 0. Let's go back to that graph for a second. 
All right, there we go. And so this is the final statement here. So this was our original problem. What it actually meant was that x is less than 2, or x is greater than negative 2, which doesn't make any sense. All right, that's kind of weird to read it. x is greater than 2, x is less than 2. Let's put it together, and this is what it comes out together. x is greater than negative 2, right here, and x is less than 2 over here. So this is our final answer. All right, let's keep going. Part B, 4x squared plus 5 is greater than or equal to 41. Here we go. So 4x squared plus 5 is greater than or equal to 41. We want 4x squared is greater than or equal to 36. That means x squared is greater than 9. Just like the last problem, we say x is greater than or equal to 3, or x is less than or equal to negative 3. Because we introduced a negative value from something that was originally positive, it's essentially like multiplying by a negative value. What we have here, though, this graph is saying it's the, gra it's the graph on either direction. So it's less than or equal to negative 3, or greater than or equal to 3. Something to consider. All right, let's keep going. Part C, 12x plus, sorry, 2x plus 2, the absolute, is less than 8. What is this actually saying? Well, this here, folks, is essentially a double negative, a double in, in, inequality. This is what it's saying. The double inequality is saying, okay, this is, means that when I have an absolute, that this number inside here could have been positive 8 or negative 8, and we want only the values less than 8. So that means the values inside here had to be between negative 8 and 8. Okay? Between negative and 8 and 8 because the numbers from 0 to negative 8 will give us a number less than 8, and the numbers from 0 to 8 will give us numbers less than 8. Otherwise, if it was the symbol going the opposite direction, let's say a greater than symbol, we would consider the outside values. So think about the answers we want to yield. Any of these numbers in here, between negative 8 and 8, will yield us a value that is less than 8. So move the plus 2 to both sides, divide everything by 2, and this is what we end up with. Okay, why is this a valid answer? Well, if I take negative 5 and I plug it into here, I get 2 times negative 5 plus 2, and that gives us negative 8, and negative 8 absolute value is 8. It is not less than 8, but that is the outermost bound. Over here, I'm going to put a 3, plug it into here, you get 2 times 3 plus 2 is less than 8. All right, and then finally you would draw a number line, exactly as such. Put your numbers in. You will need more than 7 ticks, because remember we want to go from three, negative 5 to 3, and you can fill that in yourself. Let's look at the last one. All right, we have a cubic function. So solve for the cubic, and lo and behold, folks, in a cubic, we don't have two possible answers. So you don't have to worry about that plus minus. So in this case, the number line is pretty easy to draw. All right, that's the end of the video, folks. Take care. Have a good night.